With part three, bringing this lecture series to an end, I would like to give you a brief introduction into how to create components and then how to create technical drawings based on those components. So what's a component? Well, a component is actually, for example, one building block inside a design that can be used multiple times. So for example, the leg, the tabletop could be one component. This long support and the shorter support could be a component. Traditionally in CAD, uh, with engineering, the way how they actually approach the design is uh, once the design is done, they create for each component an individual file and then in an assembly put them all together. In Fusion, and then the way how I introduce you to, we follow more an explorative design approach where inside one file we create everything and then afterwards in the same file we can then still create all the components afterwards. And as you see, we build everything so that they look like assembled together. So how do we now create a component? Well, we actually have one component already and that is the basic wood table 2016. That is actually one component where we put everything in. And that is marked by this block or cubicle icon. If I go to tabletop, right mouse button and say create components from bodies. You see now it created a new component. The tabletop object was moved out and moved into this component. Here I have a lag, I can do the same. It doesn't necessarily matter actually which elements we use because we can just at the end in the timeline, once we are done with the explorative and refining design, then create all the components. Perfect. And because everything is parametric, if we do a change here, also our components will obviously be updated. Okay. So all those elements, maybe for the moment I hide, because these four are the main building blocks for our wooden table design. And that's actually how you create components already. So there's not really much more to it. To create a drawings first, you have to save the design. And then we can go to new drawing. from design and here for example it asked me to save and then we will in a short moment get a dialogue about the full assembly and that's currently not what I want so with this setting everything you see being active will be sent to the drawing module to create the technical drawings that is not what I want I want for example only from this object to create a drawing okay Click OK. And then it loads the drawing module, which is pretty much the same or not the same, but it works very much the same way as the drawing module or the layout module in AutoCAD. So up here we have drawing views, modification for move, center lines, uh, etc., dimensions, text, symbols, and so forth. On the right side, you see drawing view. Now there we have the orientation of our object and then a scale. So for example, one quarter scale, and you see this is the front view. So it's not necessarily giving me a lot of information. So maybe I switch to the right view. Okay, quarter view works. What about one eighth? That's too small. Half scale, that's pretty big. Let's work with quarter scale for the moment. Okay. Edge visibility, there are some, some other abilities to turn uh, tangent edges on, off, etc. Currently we can keep them at off. Ignore those parts for the moment. I will go to those later. Okay. And then with the mouse button you can click and click OK. And then we place our 3D object on the layout and then, as you can see, the drawing module created the drawings for us. 
we can, for example, go to dimension, click on this and this, and add dimension. When we zoom in, we could say U and U, there is a dimension. Oh, or for example, there is a dimension. There is a dimension. Okay, press escape, so we leave the command. We can also select certain dimensions and delete them again. You can also adjust their position, for example, there. Okay, and this one I will delete. Just keep the upper one. Again, everything I'm doing here right now is more to give you kind of like a quick understanding of the functionalities. Down here we have the information about the project, the title, and the scale, so we can at one point adjust all those as well. We will skip it for the moment and focus more on what we can do with all the different views. Well, we could add actually another base view, or we could, for example, create a projected view. So a projected view means click on this one, then I select, this is my base drawing, and then when I move the mouse to the left and to the right, and for example, straight below, and now at an angle, you see there's a perspective isometric view. Click OK, press Enter, and then there you see it created all those additional views for you. We can, for example, create a cut section view. So let's say we go to, to this view. So from there to there, click left mouse button and then press enter. And then I can create or drag this one out to there, press enter. So you know there it created a cut section view and it added the correct filling so you understand um, based on drawing standards that this is for example kind of like showing the material cut. Okay, there's also a detail view. So for example, I could go to this drawing and say maybe here, this point and drag this one out. So left mouse button, click and maybe put this one to there, click and then I could say one quarter, one half, one one actually would be big, click OK. And there, this is actually now the detail view. I'd like to reposition this a little bit, maybe, maybe to there, so it's easier to read. Perfect. Okay, so you see we can even then simply mark the area and adjust it. Let's see if we can move this one maybe to there. So we can rearrange everything a little bit there. Okay. And what is really great about the way how Fusion and the drawing module works is everything also here is linked. So let's save this drawing. So that is cur the correct name. Just add this one to it. And then when I go back to my design, let's say there, and I would like now to adjust maybe the tenant or so. So uh, let's go to change parameters. There's the offset and maybe this one we will set to one. Okay. And you see, again, this is a component. And as I mentioned, these components will be updated when we adjust those. So if we now go back to the drawing, uh, we might actually have to save this first. Hold on. Okay, save. And then go to here. There's no, see the chain has a warning sign because the software no noticed that the geometry, actually the fusion file, this drawing is based on, got changed. So this drawing is outdated. And when we click on it, it updates everything, and there you see now the tenon 
is updated as well. So you never have to recreate drawings when you adjust your design. Going back to what I mentioned before with like in manufacturing, how traditionally uh, sometimes things are done, um, the designer creates a design and then this is when it's finalized, it's brought over to engineering manufacturing. They create all their blueprints and then the different component files and send it out. And then if you, and if you work, for example, very traditionally and you only use, let's say, uh, SketchUp or AutoCAD and designs have to be changed, then all the drawings you created have to be updated or adjusted as well. And you see here with everything being nicely interactively linked, you always make sure that your design and your drawings are all correct and updated. And it's only a mouse click to make sure that everything also is updated, which is just the beauty of Fusion 360 and the reason why I teach and use it professionally. So if you want to output this drawing and send it to somebody, then we can go to output and save it as a PDF or save it, for example, as a DWG. DWG obviously is a preferred format, specifically when this has to be loaded inside an AutoCAD or Autodesk product. PDF is uh, a very good format to send out to somebody who might actually not necessarily have AutoCAD because PDF can be opened by any, everybody. DWG is not a format every program actually can load. But if, for example, you do something in Fusion and then you want uh, or you would like to bring it over into AutoCAD, then output to DWG is what you have to select. And this basically concludes everything for the part three components and drawings and also the complete lecture series about a quick introduction into how to parametrically explore, refine, and then finalize your furniture design in Fusion 360.